This is Trinity Sunday. What the heck does that mean to you? It's our doctrine, of course, that God is presented in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but how does that relate to us in our daily lives? Let's see if what Jesus has to say to Nicodemus has some insight for us. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. Today's Gospel is from John 3, 1 through 17. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What, of the, what is born of the flesh is flesh, and what of, is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from the heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of God be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. In, indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The yes. Gospel of the Lord. Glory to Christ, Savior Jesus Christ. So, did those remarks from Jesus to Nicodemus solve all your questions about the Trinity? Yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> the story of Nicodemus has become one of those evangelical stories that kind of lost a lot of meaning as we've gone along the way. It's summed up in the injunction to believe in Christ so that you may have eternal life. True as that is, we lose a lot in the translation and repetition. Saying the sinner's prayer or making a verbal statement that you believe in Jesus may be the ticket to heaven when you die. But it misses most of the blessing that Jesus intends for us here and now. It misses the awesome reality <clears throat> which Jesus invites us into. So when we look at our relationship with with God from the perspective of God being angry with us for our sins, we miss the amazing fact that God does not condemn us, that Jesus is not here with condemnation and a get out of jail free pass, that we can somehow earn by saying the right thing. God, according to Jesus in the Gospel of John, is love. God's not angry, hateful, wrathful, and mean. God does not want to punish anyone. God wants to restore us the powerful love that he, God used to create us in the first place, the love from which we've walked away. 
More likely, though, we've spent our whole lives running away from God because we fear God's judgment of us. But Jesus is here standing in front of us with open arms stretched out in love, ready to receive us when we collapse after all that running. We all have various ways of running from God, don't we? Some of us are brave and bold. Some are cowardly and fearful. Some are just worried all the time. While others tell themselves they're fine without God. Still others try to figure out God's rules so they can qualify. How do you avoid the reality of God's amazing love and your running away from God? So we come to Jesus like Nicodemus in the dark. We're afraid our true sinfulness will be revealed, that our outer appearance and standing in the community might be ruined by actually trusting God's love rather than our own performance. But Jesus has a far better gift for us than what we're seeking. Jesus invites us to join hands with one another and with him to be filled with the intoxicating love of the Holy Spirit as we dance toward the Father, or the Mother, if you will. We're invited to participate in the love which is at the heart of the Trinity, the very glue that holds the Father, Son, and Spirit in unity while allowing them to be present to us in differing ways. Can you allow yourself to feel, to think, and to be moved into action by love so that you no longer run from the parts of yourself you dislike or fear and instead embrace Christ? See, being born again is the discovery that God loves you, all of you, not just the parts you prefer. Being born again is the discovery that God is reorganizing your soul so that you live in peace with yourself and God and others. Being born again is discovering there's nothing, nothing that can separate you from the love of God. Being born again is discovering yourself dancing with the Trinity and an eternal, wonderful love dance. Even while we're facing the struggles of daily life. Some of us may remember being deeply in love with another person, that intoxicating love that sweeps you off your feet, makes you want to sing and dance, that delight-filled power of love that bridges every gap and distance. That, my friends, is just the base of the mountain of divine love that rises up before us when we are born anew in Christ. So we might ask, well, how do we get this, huh? Where do I sign up? And the secret that Jesus revealed to Nicodemus (coughs) is this. It is the faithfulness of Jesus that is freely given and has already been given and is right in front of us to receive. Now, it's already been given to us because Jesus is faith. God's love has reached out across the gap that we imagine exists between us and God to take us up as a loving parent takes up a wounded and exhausted child. God has been faithful to us. So will we simply allow God to care for us in love and or will we continue to fight like the little child who is too tired for his or her own good, who's determined to do something he or she cannot do while crying and angry at his or her inability? You've experienced that, I'm sure. When we collapse into the arms of Jesus, the suffering stops. We know divine love. Then as we awaken to this love, we're invited to join this dance with Jesus, the Father and the Holy Spirit, 
This, friends, is the new creation, the new life God offers us now. So the question is, will we get up and dance together with Jesus like newlyweds? Will we, we have but to rise up and embrace the love day by day until we're one with God and yet unique? True love does not flatten us out. True love does not require us to perform properly to be welcomed. True love does not account all faults and failings. True love does not depend on us doing the impossible. True love is a dance in which the divine music draws us into motion that comes from us and our dance partners. We find harmony and rhythm. True love is the embrace of complete faithfulness of God in Christ. So the Trinity, friends, is not some odd doctrine, but a mystery that points us to a divine dance of love into which we're called, in which the Holy Spirit wraps us in the arms of God, the embrace of Christ in an endless and beautiful dance. Those of you who were here a few weeks ago, we had our, some of our African brothers and sisters who got up and sang for us, and as they did, they danced. Some of you may remember that Suzanne had some friends here, and there was quite a bit of this during her we the wedding of her daughter. People got up, and they used their bodies to say, thank you, God. Somehow we got into the idea that we have to sit in painful wooden seats, you know? I think God's idea is that we should get up and dance. We should meet God in the dance. So come join in this dance by following the deepest desire in your heart, which is, after all, love. It's implanted there as God's mark on your dance card. Of course, we don't have those anymore, do we? Many moves ago, when you went to a dance, you had the names of your dance partners on a card so you knew who to dance with. But God's got it all taken care of. His, God's name is on every line. God is always ready to dance with you. And may that dance bring you joy. Thanks be to God.